Jimenez, Jimenez came in on me. Um, my apologies, Mr. Lalota. I recognize Mr. Jimenez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I just snuck in, sorry. Um, Mr. Ballard, I, I, um, I watched the movie um, and um, that uh, portrays you know, part of your, of your life and, and it was a very powerful, uh, very powerful movie. And I'd like to get your opinion. The, what policies that are in place now are, if they are, um, helping the cartels, helping the human, human traffickers um, to traffic uh, minors and other, and, other, and other people in the United States? Well, we know that what drives criminal networks who are making approximately $14 million a day, what drives them are the very lack of enforcing our policies, the lack of policies, the lack of, of, enf of enforcement um, of, of the policies that are in place. Uh, because you can get, if you can get a person in and a child in that easily, that's what drives a criminal network. And, uh, and so we, we have good laws on the books. We're just not enforcing them. There's another issue that we should be very concerned about. There's something called the Flores Settlement, which is well intended. It's a court hearing that, ruling that, that, um, that compels a child to be released within 72 hours into the United States, even with, with, if that child's with, with their parent. Well, the traffickers are always smarter than we give them credit for, and they've been taking advantage of that. What they do is they'll take these children who are un unaccompanied, uh, and they will pair them, and they will t instruct them to call this woman and this man, the, the clients of the smuggler, uh, mom and dad. And Border Patrol was noticing the same kids keep coming through as the, as the kid of the family. And so that, that's a part of this conversation, too, of this family separation. If there are real families being separated, that's, that's devastating. That shouldn't happen. But let's, let's vet it. Again, it's a, it's a lack of vetting. It's a lack of investigating. Is that kid really with that parent? Or is that kid being abused? Is that kid being used as a pawn in the game, in, 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 the, in, the, in the trafficking uh, criminal uh, networks you know, uh, uh, efforts? So... Um, all those things it has to do with them taking children, in my opinion, making them the priority, investigating everything about them and who's coming to get them. That's what's lacking. You know, it's interesting because uh, you know, when my last term, I went uh, went down to the to the uh, to the border and um, to check out what was going on, and, and actually ran into about six migrants crossing the border: a father, two fathers, a couple teenagers, and. It turns out that one of the fathers wasn't really the father. Later on, they found out they did some DNA testing and, and all that. So I'm wondering if, if that DNA testing is still going on um, to find out if these supposedly parents are real parents. And that we really have, we really have a, a big, big issue here. What would you do differently in order to, to stem the flow you know, of of human trafficking that we have right now? Because you're quite right. I mean, the, the cartels are actually making more money on human trafficking than they are with drugs, which is really, when you think about it, that's a heck of a thing to say. Yeah. Uh, they're making billions of dollars uh, on human trafficking. What would you do differently? Well, for one, we, I would return the rapid DNA technology that was once in place. And the, the current administration took it away several months ago. I don't know why they did that. Uh, I've used this technology. It's like within 20 minutes, you can get a positive or negative ID and, 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 and confirm. So the administration actually took that away? Yes. They did? Yes. And so, and so we have an administration and we have and, and that's saying that it's inhumane to, to uh, separate families from each other, and yet they don't even know if the people being brought over are being brought by their family. Right. Worse than that, anyone can, like, anyone can show up and claim. I wonder what the ACLU has to say about that. That's a rhetorical question. I, I, Thank I you. Go ahead. investigate that. Yeah. Okay. Now, see, you know, I get upset, you know, when, when I see injustice, when I see, you know, what the, the, the human toll that's happening at our, at our border in the name of politics in the name of open border, the human suffering that, that continues to happen in the United States. 85,000 children, at least, that are unaccounted for. Is that a tragedy, sir? If the 85,000 are really 
uh, missing and being exploited, absolutely. But I, we don't believe that the mere fact that the calls were not answered. And I, I just wanna, if I could just make one point, we are all for when people show up and there, there's some reason to believe that it's not the parent or legal guardian for some kind of vetting. And there's lots of ways to do it. And it's easy, DNA was mentioned, calling the consulate, checking documents. But what we don't wanna see and what we have happened, or what we have seen repeatedly is just someone says, well, we don't want trafficking, so we're gonna take this family away. And then they actually are the parent. And the judge says, well, why don't you do a DNA test? And it becomes, comes clear it is the parent. So I think there needs to be balance on both sides. Thank you, my time is up. I wish I had a lot, heck of a lot more time because I could have a lot, lot more questions. Thank you and I yield back.